Greetings, readers. Welcome to the first November edition of Library News. The holiday season is right around the corner. November is a great month for expressing gratitude, so we would like to take a minute to thank all of our wonderful patrons in Iowa for your continued support. Thank you for being a part of our library community. The All Iowa Read selections for 2025 have been announced. The adult title is Distant Sons by Tim Johnston, DB117063, a mystery set in the Midwest surrounding a decades old case of three missing boys. The teen title is Res Ball by Byron Graver, DB116930. Trey Brunn is a high school basketball player on the Red Lake Reservation team playing in the shadow of his older brother who died in an accident. He wants to take his Ojibwe team all the way to the state championship game. The kid's title is Jawbreaker by Christina Wyman, DB118691. 12-year-old Max, who has an extreme overbite, must navigate his sibling rivalry and middle school bullies. Contact the library to read these books today. Now for Top 10 Fiction Books Downloaded from Bard. The Lost Coast, a novel. DB one two three one five five by Jonathan Kellerman and Jesse Kellerman. It's been almost a year since Clay Edison was forced out of his job at the coroner's bureau. Now he's on his own, working as a private eye. Clay has brought a fraud case that begins with a man surprised to learn that he's been named the executor of his grandmother's estate. Her accounts are a mess, and not everything is adding up. As Clay dives deeper into a decades-old scheme targeting the vulnerable. His investigation leads him to a bizarre town buried in the remote California wilderness. The residents don't care much for outsiders. They certainly don't like Clay asking questions, and they'll do just about anything to shut him up. Hard to Kill, a Jane Smith thriller, DB 122869, by James Patterson and Mike Lupka. Attorney Jane Smith is mounting an impossible criminal defense. Her client, Rob Jacobson, is the unluckiest of the lucky. No sooner is he accused of killing a family of three in the Hamptons than a second family is gunned down. It's not double jeopardy. It's not double murder. It's double-triple homicide. Jane's career has spanned from NYPD beat cop to Hamptons courtroom. She's tough to beat. She's even tougher to kill. The defense may never rest. Eruption. Crichton and Patterson's most explosive thriller ever. DB121769 by James Patterson. Michael Crichton, creator of Jurassic Park and Westworld, had a passion project he had been pursuing for years ahead of his untimely death. Knowing how special it was, his widow held back his notes and partial manuscript until she found the right author to complete it. The author she chose is the world's most popular storyteller, James Patterson. Eruption brings the pace of Patterson and the concept of Crichton, the most anticipated megathriller in years. Confessions of the Dead, DB 122700, by James Patterson. Hollows Bend, New Hampshire, is a picture-perfect New England town where weekend tourists flock to see fall leaves and eat breakfast at the Stairway Diner. The crime rate, zero, is a point of pride for Sheriff Ellie Pritchett. The day the stranger shows up is when the trouble starts. The sheriff and her deputy investigate the mysterious teenage girl. None of the locals can place her. She can't or won't answer any questions. She won't even tell them her name. While the girl is in protective custody... The officers are called to multiple crime scenes, leading them closer and closer to a lake outside of town that doesn't appear on any map. Angel of Vengeance, DB123376, by Douglas J. Preston and Lincoln Child. A desperate bargain is broken. Constant Green confronts Manhattan's most dangerous serial killer, Enoch Ling, bartering for her sister's life. But she is betrayed and turned away empty-handed, incandescent with rage. A clever trap is set. Unknown to Lang, Pendergast's brother, Diogenes, appears unexpectedly, offering to help, for mysterious reasons of his own. Disguised as a cleric, Diogenes establishes himself in New York's notorious Five Points slum, manipulating events like a chess master, watching Lang's every move, and waiting his own chance to strike. 
a vengeful angel will not be deterred. Meanwhile, as Pendergast focuses on saving the unstable Constance in her fanatical quest for vengeance, she strikes out on her own to rescue her beloved siblings from a tragic fate and take savage retribution on Ling. But Ling is one step ahead and has a surprise for them all. The Child Next Door, DB120587, by Shalini Boland. Kirsty Rollins is jolted awake by a child crying. Racing upstairs to check on her newborn, she is plunged into every parent's worst nightmare. She hears an unknown voice in the baby monitor saying, Let's take the child and go. Is someone trying to steal her little girl? In the bedroom, her daughter is safe asleep in her cot. Is the voice coming from a nearby house? But there aren't any other children living off her quiet country road. The police don't believe her, and neither does her husband. Kirsty knows something isn't right. She thought she could trust her neighbors. Now she isn't sure. As she unravels the secrets of the people living on her street, Kirsty's perfect life begins to fall apart. Because someone is hiding a terrible lie, and they will do anything to stop Kirsty uncovering the truth. But is the danger closer to home than she thinks? A Death in Cornwall, a novel, DB 123243, by Daniel Silva. Art restorer and legendary spy Gabrielle Allen has slipped quietly into London to attend a reception at the Courtauld Gallery, celebrating the return of a stolen self-portrait by Vincent van Gogh. But when an old friend from the Devon and Cornwall police seeks his help with a baffling murder investigation, he finds himself pursuing a powerful and dangerous new adversary. The victim is Charlotte Blake, a celebrated professor of art history from Oxford who spends her weekends in the same seaside village where Gabrielle once lived, her murder appears to be the work of a diabolical serial killer who has been terrorizing the Cornish countryside. But there are a number of telltale inconsistencies, including a missing mobile phone. And then there is the mysterious three-letter cipher she left behind on a notepad in her study. Gabrielle soon discovers that Professor Blake was searching for a looted Picasso worth more than $100 million, and he takes up the chase for the paintings as only he can. With six Impressionist canvases forged by his own hand and an unlikely team of operatives that include a world-famous violinist, a beautiful master thief, and a lethal contract killer turned British spy. Do Not Disturb, DB 122010 by Frida McFadden. Quinn Alexander has committed an unthinkable crime. To avoid spending her life in prison... Quinn makes a run for it. She leaves behind her home, her job, and her family. She grabs her passport and heads for the northern border before the police can discover what she's done. But when an unexpected snowstorm forces her off the road, Quinn must take the refuge at the broken-down, isolated Baxter Motel. The handsome and kindly owner, Nick Baxter, is only too happy to offer her a cheap room for the night. Unfortunately, the Baxter Motel isn't the quiet, safe haven it seems to be. The motel has a dark and disturbing past, and in the dilapidated house across the way, the silhouette of Nick's ailing wife is always at the window, always watching. In the morning, Quinn must leave the motel. She'll pack up her belongings and get back on the road to freedom, but first, she must survive the night. Flashpoint. D.B. 123018 by Catherine Coulter. A year has passed since Elizabeth Palmer was nearly killed with hundreds more in the attempted bombing of St. Paul's in London, believed to be a terrorist act, until the police discovered it was the cover for something even more sinister. For Elizabeth, life is finally back to normal. She's optimistic, her painting is getting alkylades when suddenly her world changes in a flash. With three new attempts on her life and her connection to the terrorist attack, MI5 gets involved to find out who is trying to kill her and why. Autumn Backman, 12 years old, begrudgingly accepts a summer job to shepherd Tosh Navarro, a shy, bullied little boy. He's staying with his uncle while his father and stepmother go on a honeymoon in Europe Then the unexpected happens. Autumn learns Tosh is gifted psychically. Like her and Tosh's father, Arch Navarro, is suspected of embezzling from his own firm. The FBI and Interpol are on the case, but Archer 
and his new wife have disappeared. Tosh is scared and convinced his father needs help. So Autumn reaches out to Dylan Savage, the only person she knows who can find them. Desperate for answers, Elizabeth flies to Washington, D.C. to seek out Savage and Sherlock and is assigned Special Agent Rome Fox for protection. With deadly assailants in terrifying pursuit, Elizabeth and Rome soon find themselves neck deep in danger and in a race for survival. Blind Vigil, a Rick Cahill novel, DB121212, by Matt Coyle. Blinded by a gunshot wound to the face while working as a private investigator nine months ago, Rick Cahill is now sure of only one thing. He has to start a new life and leave his old one behind. He's still trying to figure out what that life is when his one-time partner, Moria McFarlane, asks for his help on a case she's taken for Rick's former best friend. The case is simple, and Moria only needs Rick for one interview. But Rick is wary of waking sleeping demons. Ultimately, he goes against his gut and takes the case, which quickly turns deadly. Rick's old compulsion of finding the truth no matter the cost the same compulsion that cost him his eyesight and almost his life battles against his desire to escape his past. The stakes are raised when Rick's friend is implicated in murder and needs his help. Can he help the friend he no longer trusts while questioning his own lessened capabilities? His life depends on the answer as a shadowy killer lurks in the darkness. Makerspace Monday will take place on November 18th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. You can join us in person or via Zoom. This month, we are celebrating your favorite book title and creating a textured autumn masterpiece. All ages are welcome. You can find the link to register on our blog at iowalibrary.blog, or call the library and we can help get you registered. For any questions about Makerspace Mondays, contact Denise Bean at denise.bean at blind.state.ia.us or 515-452-1338. Save the date. On Friday, November 22nd, from 7 to 9 p.m., the Friends of the Iowa Library for the Blind will host their annual Barbershop Quartet Holiday Concert Fundraiser. It will be held in the Assembly Room at the Iowa Department for the Blind. Come join us for a fun evening of music. Admission is $10 at the door or in advance from any Friends board member. Many Faces of Bard will be held on Thursday, November 14th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The topic for this month will be Using Bard on the Hem Sense Player, the program will begin with a presentation by Corey Cadlick, Assistive Technology Manager at Perkins Library. After the presentation, they will entertain questions about the presentation or anything else relating to Bard. The NLS Music Notes program will be held on November 19th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The topic will be Popular Music Lead Sheets, PMLS a publication produced by the NLS Music Section. Music Reader Services Librarian, Mary Dell Jenkins, and Braille Music Librarian, Timothy Jones, will talk about the history of PMLS and about the lead sheet format, what it is, and how to read it. During the presentation, questions will be submitted through the online chat. A question and answer will follow. The All May E-Read the monthly NLS program that focuses on the NLS Braille e-reader will be held Tuesday, November 26th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. For all NLS programs, please contact the library for the login information or go to iowalibrary.blog. The library will be closed on Monday, November 11th in observance of Veterans Day. We will also be closed on Thursday, November 28th and Friday, November 29th for the Thanksgiving holiday. Please don't hesitate to contact the library with any questions or comments at 515-281-1323 or by email at library at blind.state.ia.us. The library is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Happy reading! Happy reading!